America. I will tell you that this summer would be a great time for people to start making baby steps in new paths. And this is going to come back in um, first quarter 2011 and say, okay, you've done your baby steps. Yeah. Now roll up your sleeves and, and get grounded and make this happen. Yeah, I think if people haven't made certain, ad certain adjustments to taking care of their health, that, that would be my biggest concern is that in something like that they would be dealing with a manifestation of something. I, I've been seeing that. Uh, I've been seeing people who are um, not wanting to be on the planet anymore. Yeah. Uh, it's too scary for them. Too scary or uh, I, and in some cases it's people who just are done and need to move on. Yeah. In other cases it's people who just I'm overloaded I can't take anymore. Well, the real answer is, why not just surrender and let those aspects of your life that you think are so important go away? They're probably not going to be as important as you thought they were. Well, it's also like we've all bought a ticket and yes. we're on a train. And some trains are moving faster than others, yeah. but they're all speeding up. Yeah. And you get to decide if you want to get off that speeding yeah. train and take a little time off for yourself, and then you'll know when to get back on yeah. the train. But the destination may be different. Yeah. You and, know? And there is some control. And the level we choose to operate at can be different. And uh, the way I look at it is, I, my belief is that I volunteered to come to planet Earth. I wasn't drafted, I don't think. You know, I don't know, but I'm going yeah, with that, I, I volunteered. And the way I look at that is, we've been waiting our whole life for this period of time when things are really starting to move and transition, and the way the world has been is falling apart. I mean, we can see it all around us. And what a wonderful thing to be able to step out and create this unknown new reality. Reconstruction, but it's yes. not going to be ever the same what we've known before. And we've needed these changes. Yeah. And I think that also the, the things that are happening in the political scene around our country and even in the world, I think the things that are hidden are going to start bubbling up to the surface. Yeah. And it depends upon how we're going to respond. Are we going to become, sure. you know, uh, uh, are we going to become more of the war mind, yeah. which has never worked and it never will. Right. Are we going to look at what we can do to take some of the power back in sure. ways that make a difference in our society? Absolutely. You know, uh, I think that what's happened in the Gulf was not an accident. Right. I think on some level, uh, let's say on a spiritual level, we really have to learn how to take care of the planet because it's yes. our mother. And yes. it's what gives us life. And yeah. if we continue to pollute the air, the water, the land, right. what have we got left? A, yeah. Pretty much a dead planet. Right. Well, there's a feeling also that I have that that's not going to happen. You know? Right. Yeah. I, I really believe that there's the powers that be in, in the universe that are not going to allow that to happen to this beautiful, beautiful planet. Well, the way I've personally experienced it in life, and I hope I'm wrong, but oftentimes the universe gives me a message and then I either get it or I ignore it. And if I ignore it, they come back and it's a little louder the next time. And before long, if I'm still ignoring it, I get the cosmic two by four. Well, I look at the situation that happened in the Gulf of Mexico as like a cosmic two by four. Yes. And either we're going to change our patterns and change our way of living and step into new paradigms or they'll come back and talk a little louder to us the next time. Yeah. Now Mark, I know that you've probably looked at our president's sure. uh, chart. Could you talk a little bit about that? Because sure. we're all very curious about what in the heck is he doing? Right. <laughs> we have questions. Yes, yes. <laughs> you know? um, so first off with this T-square, the top of the T is going on in the part of this chart, we call it the eighth house that rules other people's values, other people's money, taxes. So all of a sudden, everybody's trying to decide, for example, on health care, who's got the better plan or the better way to go. So all of these other people's values are coming up in many and very emotional ways. Mm -hmm. On the other side of the chart, he's got Aries, which is in his values, which Aries is kind of a pioneer a new path and it's time to go this new way. And so he's having to do this balancing act between his values and everybody else's values. Right. And then that base leg of the T-square goes to the place of um, what we call the 11th house is the group consciousness. How do we help the collective consciousness step its vibration into this next thing? 
And so when I look at all the things that are going on with people in terms of emotional reactiveness of, oh, Obama did this or he didn't do that kind of a thing, in a sense, he's serving as an archetype or a, a lightning rod for these people. And I would yes. say it's not, you don't want to dump that on him personally. No. He's holding an archetype of energy that's saying we need to step into a larger set of ideals. And it's natural that one group of people is going to say, do it this way, and the other is going to say, no, no, we should do it that way. What do you think he's holding back? Well, uh, the one thing I saw was he has uh, his rising sign. In astrology, a rising sign is how you go out after the world. It's kind yeah. of the constellation that was on the sunrise position when you were born. Yeah. And that was Aquarius, which is the idealism and hold the higher vision for people. Mm -hmm. uh, and I love like the, the work of Carolyn Mace. She said that whoever was uh. elected represented what the needs of the people were, where the people were wounded. And Aquarius has to do with the higher vision. Yes. And so not to knock his predecessor, but uh, he was called to step into a higher vision or demonstrate a higher vision that perhaps wasn't available uh, prior to his presidency. Um, and what people didn't see is that his Mars, Mars's male energy was yeah. in Virgo, which is very pragmatic energy. Yes. So all of a sudden he got elected and all these people said, oh, this guy's way more practical or pragmatic than our idealistic vision was supposed to be. Right. Uh, and both of these are signs that are not necessarily emotional. So people say, oh, he's not throwing a hissy fit over the Gulf of Mexico. Oh, I would disagree with that. I would just say that he's got these very cool, detached signs that aren't going to show that to the public. Uh, so you think he's actually doing some things behind the scenes? I think his chart is one who totally does the things behind the scenes. Oh, we're and, not seeing And it. isn't going to go out and do some big, you know, Newt wave Rockne speech or yeah. wave the flag kind of a thing. But yeah. I, I, my feeling is, is somebody who's got Mars in Virgo gets a lot done because... Uh, the joke is they, they get more done before noon than most people get done in a whole day. You know what I think we're missing? I think we're missing the idea that this man that uh, is our president. Yes. The world has never been more complicated than it is today. Yeah. He's probably got the toughest job that any president right. has ever been in the right. office. But we would love for him to just be personable with us, to, yeah. to really tell yeah. us some truths to sure. show his leadership in ways sure. that we could s trust him again yes. because we're losing trust. When right. we see what's going on right. with uh, the, the, the Gulf of Mexico and the lack of, yeah. of what I call uh, pre presidential authority right. to step in, you want him, you want him mad. Like, yeah. we're mad. Yeah. He should be mad, right? Well, and he is a Leo, and, and, you know, he did all of those inspirational speeches in his, you know, trying to get elected place. Yeah. Uh, and then he kind of went into the workaholic Mars and Virgo mode. What happened he, to that guy? He needs to bring yeah. out that uh, Leo leadership, that Leo passion, That's... the heart piece. Uh, and I think that he probably just got bogged down in so much work and so much to do that that piece somehow got shoved off in a corner. It's absolutely crucial that he comes yeah. back and can reconnects with the people yes. because of the things that are being said against his character.